Amen? Amen. Well, we got some, some old time going on here. Let me bring the, the uh, pulpit up here. If I don't have something to stand behind, I'm liable to head anywhere in here. And uh, you guys saw some of that last Sunday. And uh, what a great day it's been to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. We realize that we have uh, many people traveling this week. Uh, Brother John Bell, I know that they are out of town. We lift them up for traveling mercies and... and uh, we are just so, so uh, honored to be able to come into God's house this morning. Amen? Amen. You know, uh, grace and peace from God our Father and His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, all over the sanctuary, whether you have your Bibles in printed or digital format, hold your Bibles up in there if you would, please. Amen. Okay, great. I see the digital one over there. I'm so glad you didn't have solitaire on that. Amen. Please turn in your Bibles to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. Today we finish our series titled Above All with today's message called Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You know there simply is something about that name. Amen? Amen. It is a profound name. It is an incredible name. It is the name of our Savior. It is the name of our Lord. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. If you're there, say amen. amen. Reading from the word of God, it's a simple verse. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. May the Lord add his blessings upon his word. You know, in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 through 19, the writer concludes this letter by giving practical instructions for Christian living. Practical instructions for Christian living. But make no mistake about it, Hebrews 13, 8 is the central focus of this part of practical Christian living. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It is not an exhortation, but a declaration. It is the golden verse of all of the book of Hebrews. It is a unique verse to preach because of its simplicity. Why is it that preachers and pastors love to preach on this verse? It's simple. It can be explained simply by quoting it. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, forever, uh, yes, yesterday, today, and uh, forever. Amen. 
Look at verse 7, if you would, quickly. If you dare, say amen. amen. Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. This is the church's duty to its spiritual leaders, to remember them. It also tells us that the church needs leaders whose teaching is worth remembering, whose way of life is worth considering, and whose faith is worth imitating. Amen? Amen. How do you get leaders by, like that? How do you get preachers like that? How do you get pastors by, like that? It's because those preachers, those pastors, those leaders live their life based on this one truth. That Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'm going to quote that about 50 times in this message. It is simply that good. And all God's people said. Amen. You see, that, that verse indicates that their leaders had moved on. They had moved away or they had moved on to their eternal reward. That is the inevitable reality of human church leaders. Amen? Leaders come and leaders go. Leaders rise and leaders fall. Leaders live and leaders die. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. You know the memorial to John Wesley in Westminster Abbey reads, God buries his workmen, but he carries on his work. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at verse 9. If you're there, say amen. amen. Do not be carried about with various and strange doctrines. For it is good that the heart be established by grace, not with foods which have been not profited those who have been occupied with them. Friends, listen to me. How do we avoid by being led astray by false teachers? Verse 8 is the answer. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Preachers may come and preachers may go. Leaders may come and leaders may go. But whatever is preached, the preaching must remain gloriously monotonous. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The preacher is to preach Jesus as the Son of God come down from heaven. The preacher is to preach that Jesus that lived as a perfect human life. The preacher is to preach Christ as a human. Christ on the cross. Christ dead in the grave. Christ risen again to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our preaching must be gloriously monotonous. We do not need a new truth because we have the same Jesus Christ. Amen. Hebrews 13 8 may be the reason for verse 7 and it may be the grounds for verse 9. But ultimately this verse stands out because it is not only about remembering spiritual leadership. It's not only about resisting false teaching. It stands out because it makes an important statement about Christ himself. Friends, we face a changing culture by faith in a changeless Jesus Christ. Amen. You look at the mess that's going on in our country, in our government, our culture, the entire world. Whatever they may think they are doing, whatever they may think the answer is, I can tell you right now that the declaration from the Word of God is that whatever the question is, Jesus is the answer. Amen. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So friends, <clears throat> no matter the circumstances of your life, no matter when trouble comes and no matter how bad the situation may be, no matter where you may find yourself, no matter what other people may do to you, you can always count on Jesus Christ. Amen. Always. Because He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Friends, today I have three reasons why you can always count on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have your notes, say amen. amen. Now husbands, I say this every single week. I'm going to say it again. You need your own notes. Unless you are perfectly comfortable with your wife getting a word from the Lord to pass on to you. Otherwise, take your own notes. Hallelujah. Point number one in this title of Jesus, 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 we see the exceptional name, exceptional name of Jesus. 
Verse 8 starts out emphatically with the whole name, Jesus Christ. That is used only three times in the book of Hebrews. In chapter 10 and verse 10, flip in your Bibles over there quickly if you would. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 10. If you're there, say amen. By that will, will we have been sanctified through the offering and the body of what? Jesus Christ, once and for all. Chapter 13, verse 21, the other place in this, in this, this section, says, Make you complete in every good work. Well, let's back up to the verse before, verse 20. Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sleep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do His will. Working in you what is well-pleasing in His sight, through, what? Jesus Christ, to whom His glory, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Verse 10 is all about Christ our Savior. Verse 21 is about Christ our strength. But verse 8 is about Christ our sustainer. The all-sufficient su sustainer of our life. Jesus Christ is unique amongst all. He is sufficient to sustain us. Throughout the ages. So what shall we say about the name that we see here? What shall we say? I'm going to slow it down because I'm so excited I'm running on this. I'm starting to preach right now, guys, but hang with me. This is going to get good. Let's look first at the person of Jesus. You see, the name Jesus identifies him with humanity. The name Jesus identifies him with humanity. In every sense of the word, Jesus Christ was human. He is, as Dr. Adrian Rogers would say, the God-man. He is 100% man and 100% human. God. There is no part of Jesus Christ that was not man. There is no part of Jesus Christ that is not God. He is the God man. Those are not at odds when we talk about God. Amen? People say, you know what? I have difficulties with some scripture, Pastor Larry. There are places that I have difficulties with. Where can I start to work through these things? Well, first start with prayer because if you're having difficulties, the difficulty is not with the scripture. The difficulty is with us, amen? I don't like that particular passage. Ah, uh, the Lord didn't ask me if he could put it in there. But if you are having difficulties, start with this verse. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Everything that you see, everything that is, everything that ever has been and ever will be, God created. If you can accept that, all things are possible. Amen? And we simply trust God that through His Word, through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can get through the travails of life. He was man in every sense of the word. But His perfect life of sinlessness affirms that He was more than just a man. Amen? He was more than just a man. The name Jesus is the Greek transliteration of the Hebrew name Joshua, meaning Yahweh is salvation. He is the Savior. I ask you today, is Jesus Christ your Savior? Is He your Lord? Because friends, if He is not, it is the fervent prayer of every Christian in this, in this sanctuary right here today. It's the fervent prayer of every Christian listening on the internet. It's the fervent prayer of every Christian everywhere on this planet that if you are here today without knowing Jesus Christ as Lord, as your Savior, that you do not leave the same way. So all of you looking at me right here in this sanctuary, is Jesus Christ your Savior? For those of you watching on the internet, uh, is Jesus Christ your Savior? Because we don't want to get to heaven and not find you there. You know, people name their sons Jesus to express their faith in the promises of God. Amen? Well, let me ask you this. Have you seen anybody named Judas lately? That name went in the bucket, amen? 
But there are people that name their son salvation. And people name their sons Jesus to express their faith in the promise of God. To The promise of God to what? Bring salvation to His people. And He has done that through the man, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, the Bible is all about Jesus Christ. It is a Him book. It's all about Him. When you read your Bible, if you don't see Jesus standing there in the shadows, you are not reading your Bible correctly. The Old Testament says that somebody is coming to save the world. The Gospels of Jesus Christ say that somebody is here. The Epistles say that somebody came. And the book of Revelation says that someone is coming back again. Amen. And when He comes back again, I'm going with Him. Amen? Amen. You know what? We want you to be with us if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord. We want that. Uh, and, and by the way, for those of our, our, of our membership uh, that are traveling or whatever, I hope you found your way to a church service this morning uh, or this evening or last night, wherever you are in your travels. Because if Christ came right this second, amen, think about that for just a moment. If Christ came in five minutes from right now, are you ready? If you're a Christian, are you ready? Have you been a good workman? Have you been sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ? Are you in church this morning? See, that's one of life's awkward moments. If Christ comes back and the rapture happens during church and we're somewhere else. I don't know about you. I want to be in church if he comes back during church. Amen? Well, that didn't sound like a good one. I, 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 I thought I'd get a testimony. I'm glad I brought my own. I'm so glad that I'm here this morning in Emmanuel Baptist Church with all you nice looking people sitting out there. Hallelujah. Amen. So listen, friends. They understood that this salvation would come only through the Messiah. In Acts chapter 12, pardon me, Acts chapter 4, verse 12. What does Peter declare? It's a well-known verse. And there is salvation in what? No one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be what? Saved. Jesus is heaven's wonder. Jesus is hell's worry. He is the Savior of all of creation. You see, Jesus is the personal Savior of the redeemed of God. He's not some distant God. When you receive Jesus Christ as Lord, He takes up residence inside of you. I've had Jesus ask me, Pastor Larry, do you believe that the redeemed of God would ever need an exorcism, that they can be possessed by a demon? No! There's not enough room in there. When you receive Jesus Christ as Lord, Christ indwells you. 1 Corinthians and Ephesians chapter 1 both say that you are sealed by the Holy Spirit of God. So how is He going to get in there? There's no room. And by the way, where Christ is, demons cannot come. Everywhere in the Bible you see the demons, as soon as Christ shows up, they start yelling, screaming, and running away. Amen? And Jesus is humanity's way out of sin, guilt, shame, death, and hell. Write this, this passage in your, in your margin. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 6. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 5 and 6 say this. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for us all. So Jesus is the Lord's personal name. But what about Christ? Let's, let's look now at the office of Jesus Christ. It's his official name. Christ is not his last name. I want to make that clear. It is his divine office. It is, it is what he is. It's his divine office in, 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 the, in the Trinity of God. The New Testament Christ is the Old Testament Messiah, meaning anointed one. Uh, I want you to know that, that yesterday... We had a house full of the ladies from, from uh, Emmanuel Baptist Church for a baby shower for, for sweet, sweet Marcia and Davidson. You notice I mentioned Marcia first? <laughs> sweet, sweet Marcia, and then, you know, Davidson. <laughs> get, get used to that, Davidson. It's going to be like that throughout your entire life. But you know, I want you guys to know that, that, that uh, uh, when myself and my son-in-law got back from playing golf, we came in there and there was food left over. And so I partook. 
And whoever made the egg salad sandwiches, I want you to know you're an anointed woman of God. Because they were good. Was that you? Oh, well, hallelujah. How come I don't get that more often? <laughs> Messiah, Christ, meaning the anointed one. Jesus Christ is the long-awaited Messiah. My Jewish friends that have not received Christ yet, I want you to know that if you're waiting for the Messiah, He has already come. You find Him within the pages. You find Him within the pages of history. Amen? He is the Messiah King. The fulfillment of every Old Testament promise, prophecy, and prediction by God to His people. Just as the name Jesus affirmed that he was more than a man, so does the title Christ declare that he is more than just some supervisor or occupier of an office. The name of Christ declares his threefold office. Mark this down in your, in your notes. He is a prophet. He is a priest. And he is our king. Amen. Jesus the prophet reveals the will of God. Jesus the priest provides access to God. And Jesus the King exercises the rule of God. We need no other prophet to, re to reveal God's mind to a desperate and lost world. That is why we preach Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We need no other priest to secure access for every believer into the Holy of Holies. And we need no other king to advance the agenda of heaven, sovereign rule on this earth. Jesus is our prophet. He's our priest. He's our king. Amen? In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus declares, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. What does that mean? Do you want to be saved? Do you want to be saved? Jesus is the way. Jesus has saved others in the past. He will save you today, and He is saving others in the future. And He can save you right now, here and now, today. Do you want to be sure? Jesus Christ is the truth. He is the complete and total truth. He was trusted by others in the past. And you can trust your eternity to Him today. Do you want to be satisfied that you have eternal life? Jesus Christ is the life. He doesn't say that I only that I give life. He says, I am the life. He gives you life. Do you want to be satisfied? There is no satisfaction like the satisfaction of knowing you're going to heaven. There is no satisfaction like that. And you will be satisfied by Jesus Christ for all of eternity. That leaves us with no other conclusion that the redeemed of God are saved. We are sure. Because Jesus Christ is what? yesterday, today, and forever. So first we looked at the exceptional name of Jesus. Now, let us move on to the exclusive claim of Jesus. The exclusive claim of Jesus. Friends, we live in a constantly changing world. What was appropriate yesterday or in the past is no longer appropriate by the, by the people of the world. I'm not sure, but I'm almost positive that what I got that were termed whippings in my youth would land somebody in jail today. Amen? Amen. God bless you back there. I know you got the same thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, there was no such thing as time out when I was young. The only thing that was a timeout was what my dad did so he could catch his breath until he could start whipping me again. The timeout was for him to gather his thoughts and breath and to slow down a bit. Amen? Listen, the world asks, is anything eternally the same? The Christian answers, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Everything else changes. But not the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, in this passage, there is no verb. For all of my teachers out there, there is no verb in there at all. It's bad grammar, but excellent theology. Amen. You see, Hebrews 13.8 does not teach that the ways of Christ are unchanging. His ways are always good and true 
and wise and faithful and sovereign. But Jesus' ways are not immutable. What do I mean by that? Well, divine attributes are not in conflict by what I just said. Because the changelessness of Christ cannot trump the sovereignty of Jesus Christ. And what am I talking about? It's simple. The, think of some real life situations. The fact that Jesus healed the sick in the past does not guarantee physical healing to you today. It may be in God's will that you not be healed. That doesn't stop us from praying. I was so pleased this past Wednesday that you know, we have a long list of folks that we pray for and we move four people off of our prayer list. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen? Amen? Move four people right off of there. Listen, friends, Christ is able to heal sickness anytime and any place. He is the Lord Jesus Christ. However, He may choose to heal you on earth or let it happen in heaven. I know for, as for myself, I don't care as long as I'm heaven bound. I see that Brother Earl is here today. We are so pleased by that. God bless you. That is an answered prayer. Amen, Wednesday night team? Brother Earl is here. And I've, sh I've shared Brother Earl's comment to, to, to myself and Miss Ruth Ann a few times. You know, he, he says, you know, if I look like this here, can you imagine what I look like in heaven? <laughs> Hallelujah, Brother Earl. God bless you, man. You know, Brother Earl, when you show up, I just feel like preaching, brother. Uh, Earl ha has been in and out of hospitals every week as long as I've known him. And he, he, he is as changeless and unwavering in his confidence in Christ Amen. as any person I have ever met this side of heaven. Amen? Amen. Wonderful, godly young man. God bless you, brother. I, I moved right off my notes, by the way, there, guys. I'm, 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 I'm honing back in here. Listen, friends. You cannot put Jesus Christ in your box. You cannot put Jesus Christ in your box. Your idea of what church is all about. Your idea of what a sermon is all about. Your idea of how things should be run in the world. Your idea of worship. You cannot put people that want to worship God in a box. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I, I worshiped Him uh, quietly this morning when the house was quiet. And I worshiped Him loudly right down here. I hope the people right behind me were singing nice and loud so the people further behind us didn't hear me. But that's okay, amen? And so, it's an important day in my life. It was an important day in my life. I'm going to say that one more time. It was probably the most important day in my life when I realized that Jesus Christ is free to do as He pleases. When He pleases. For whom He pleases. Without my permission or agreement. The last time I checked, the Lord has never asked my opinion on one thing. Not once. He wants to talk to me, but God has a plan. And His plan is, is lived out through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So what does it mean when the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same? It means that He never changes. He never wavers. He never vacillates. He's never unsure about anything. There is no need to fear that Christ is different now. Nor there is any reason to worry that Christ will be any different in the future than what He has been in the past. He is your Jesus today. He was your mother's Jesus. He will be your children's Jesus. He is sufficient to get us to heaven. Past, present, or future makes no difference to the eternal Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ is immutable. His holy character will not change. His righteous standards will not change. His eternal purpose will not change. His saving power cannot change. His steadfast love for you will never change. And His sovereign authority over all things, as King of all, will not change. And so not only is He the unchanging Christ, Jesus is sufficient. Hebrews was written to Jewish Christians. Did you know that? Maybe the title of the book gave us a clue. Amen? It was written to Jewish Christians. Because of severe persecution, they were tempted to forsake their faith in Christ and return to the practice of Judaism. The writer pens this letter to assert that Jesus is better than anything that they ever had before. And that He was far superior to whatever they may have without Him. 
And the message can be summarized here by restating this again. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I don't want you to ever get bored with hearing that. I don't want you to ever get bored with thinking that. I don't want you to ever get, get bored in saying that to someone. That Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And the fact that Jesus is the same it means that Jesus is sufficient. In Christ, we find everything that we need. There is nothing else that we need but the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to go back to what you were. And you don't have to look for something new, better, or different in the future. Because no matter which direction you may look, Jesus Christ is the same. He is everything do you need. Do you know Jesus? Is He the Lord of your life? Do you trust Him? There is no reason for you to be living in worry, doubt, or fear. Christ is everything that you need. So lift up your hearts. Burst out in song. Live a life of exceedingly gladness. Because this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice in it. Listen to me, guys. I am all about Jesus. You can't get me to shut up about Jesus. There are days when I'm so excited about it, I don't know whether to get up here, sing, dance, break dance, or preach. I'm going to stick with preaching right now. I know I'm sure my island friends are looking forward to that day I break dance up here. It's not going to happen. I'm a Baptist. We know that we can move our hips or our feet, but never both at the same time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So listen, friends. Not only is Jesus immutable, He is divine. You see, changelessness is an attribute of God the Father. Go with me now. Pay attention. Everybody look up here. Changelessness, immutability is an attribute of God the Father. To call Jesus immutable, to call Him unchanging, is to call Jesus God. Amen. Jesus is the blending of deity and humanity. My dear friends, Jesus is the meeting place of time and eternity. He is the intersection between heaven and earth. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we've seen the exceptional name of Jesus, the exclusive claim of Jesus. Let us now look to the enduring faithfulness, enduring faithfulness of Jesus. I don't know about you, I love faithful people. I love people that you can trust. I love people that their yes is yes and their no is no. Amen? Listen, friends, what we have in Jesus is infinitely better than anything that we can have anywhere else. Amen. Anything. Hebrews 13.8 makes it clear that the bottom line is trust, not theology. It's a, that's of course because sound doctrine is essential to good, genuine faith. You are what you believe. However, faith is more than knowledge and agreement. Are you with me? Say amen. amen. Because faith is trust in a person, the person of Jesus Christ. It's not simply an agreement with a creed. Let me share you get something with you guys. This should be the only denomination there is. Denominations are man-made. People should read their Bible, teach their Bible, therefore get rid of the man-made divisions amongst us. Is every church that I've ever visited my cup of tea? No. But if people are getting saved there, glory to God. Amen. You see, we all have places that we want to attend where we're, we're comfortable. We feel like we can come there and worship. We can come there and fellowship with people close to how we are. That we can, we can be part of this church service. But let me share this with you. That's not our job. There is a community around here full of people not like us. And we are called to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ to this community. That's why when we send the homelessness on the way, we send them with an invitation to church. We send them with some water. When I'm, when I'm out walking through the neighborhood, or, or this morning walking around picking up trash, people that are walking by, I invite them to church. A lady this morning says, Pastor, I, I don't have proper clothing. Come as you are. No one will look at you any different. Bring whatever you, is your best. Or bring whatever you're comfortable in. But come to church. 
Even if you stand in the back and watch us the first time just to see how we are. Amen? There's a world out there that is dying and going to hell because they're apart from Christ. And they, don't, they believe firmly in their heart that church people don't want them in here. That's not what Jesus taught. Sound doctrine is, is, is essential, but friends, we must have the heart of Christ for our, for our community. Christianity is Christ, and Christ is God. And nothing else matters if Jesus is not who He claims to be. So who is this Jesus? Je verse 8 succinctly says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You must be Jesus to our community, to your friends, to your neighbors, to your co-workers, so that they know that Jesus is the same yesterday, and today, and forever. When I first started coming to what was formerly known as Living Hope Baptist Church, going way back, it was called Harvest Chapel. Way back. And let me tell you what got me in that church. First, the music and the singing was fantastic. I loved it. But it was the men of that church that got me to, to really dive in for the Lord. Why? Because they were the same in church as they were outside of church, and the same way when they sat with me in private as they did with a crowd away from church. They were as unchanging in how they represented Jesus Christ as any men I have ever found in my life. Brother Cliff Dugall is one of those men. Brother Roger Fable is one of those men. Those men that, that brought me along with them. And look what God has done. Look at the things God has done in all of our lives. Brother Cliff, who, who was this quiet guy back there playing the guitar a little bit. Our praise band leader. Amen. Wonderful thing. Brother Roger Fable, godly man. Wonderful man. I've said many times when I get to heaven, I want to be close enough to the throne to see the back of his head. I noticed that, I don't know how you did it, brother, but the video last week, I look like I lost 15 pounds. Keep it up. <laughs> that verse we've been reading over and over and over, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I want the repeated conjunction... Where's the teachers in here? I wanted you guys to know I, I worked on that. <laughs> the repeated conjunction, the word and, gives this verse declaration and force. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. It gives force to it. You can trust the unwavering faithfulness of Christ in every season of your life. Were you saved when you were young? Say amen. Amen. Were you saved uh, a couple of years ago? Say amen. It, uh, do you know somebody that you're trying to get saved in the future? Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. We want soul winners in here. We, we can use the same Jesus throughout the process. In closing, let's look for a moment at the three partitions of today's passage. First, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. The word yesterday may be the link that connects this verse to the previous verse. Their church had good leaders and pastors. The reference that says, those whose faith follow considering the outcome of their conduct indicates that they had moved on. So their leadership team were gone. Maybe dead, but they were gone. What does that mean to us? Look up here, everyone. Verse 8 asserts the truth that while Emmanuel Baptist Church might have needed a pastor at some point. It did not, and it never has, needed a new Savior. Amen. Never. Christ is to be preached here. And you find a preacher that's going to preach Christ. Jesus is the Ancient of Days who was the same before there was anything called yesterday. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And what? The Word was God. He existed before time existed. So Jesus is the same yesterday. And second, Jesus is Christ is the same today. That word today refers to the present time. In general terms, it means it's real. It's now. He's the Jesus that's indwelt right now in your heart, Brother Cliff. He's here in this sanctuary. Listen to me. The historical one is the contemporary one. The historical Jesus is the contemporary Jesus. And the Bible is not a history book about what Jesus did yesterday. 
It is a God-breathed resume of what Jesus Christ can do and is doing today and will do tomorrow. It is no secret what God can do, what He's done for others. He'll do for you. Amen? Amen. And it's done through the Lord Jesus Christ. For chapter 13, verse 8, challenges us to trust that Jesus is the Lord of right now. Jesus Christ is the Lord still today, no matter what your present circumstances are. No matter what you're going through. He's the same yesterday. And second, Jesus Christ is the same today. And finally, Jesus Christ is the same forever. Amen. The term yesterday and today and forever emphasize the continuity of Christ. The first two about his continuity now and in the past. The word forever takes the continuity as far into the future as it will go. How long is forever? We have no idea. Here's what I know. What we're in right now is not even a tick of time. When you've been in heaven 10 trillion times 10 trillion times 10 trillion years, the first tick of the clock for eternity has not even struck. You know, people say, well, Pastor Larry, when we get to heaven, will we have a mansion? When we get to heaven, are there streets of gold? What about the glorified body? Those things are all good. That's not why I want to go to, G to heaven. I want to go to heaven because that's where Jesus is. Amen. I want to look my Savior in, in the face and say, thank you for saving me. When you were on the cross, it was my name, my name that you remembered. So that one day I can make my way to be with you. Hmm. He is the Lord of time and eternity. He is the God of past, present, and future. Yesterday he was faithful to our fathers. Today he is faithful to us. And forever he will be faithful to our children. Do you have a wayward child? Do you have a wayward grandchild? Do you have a wayward nephew or niece? The answer is not man's plans. The answer is Jesus Christ. And just as Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and His love, you need to be the same way with those children. You need to love them as Christ loved us. Because He will forever be faithful to us. Revelation chapter 1 verse 8 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. You know, when we pray on Sunday mornings, one of the things I always say with our prayer team is 1 Timothy 1.17. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to God alone who is wise, be all power and all praise and all glory. In the name of Jesus, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Friends, that is why Christians believe in eternal security. If you were ever saved, you are still saved, and you will always, what? Be saved. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Give him some praise in the house of God. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You know, thank you. How do I know? I know because I was restless. How do I know? Because I was wild. Because I was addicted. I was lost. Because I was empty. I know because I was living behind a mask. How do I know Jesus is alive? Because he lives in me. Jesus did what no one else could do for me. He took the punishment for my failures, my wrong decisions, my selfishness, my pride, and my sin. He was beaten. He was mocked. He was tortured. Crucified. And buried for me. But on the third day, he did exactly what he said he would do. Jesus rose up and walked right out of the tomb. And in the summer of 1985, July of 2007, February 2005, June 2003, and in August 1995, he walked into my life. And I've never 
been the same since. Now I am truly living. Now I am sober. I am at peace. I am fulfilled. Now I am free. Now I am found. My God. My Savior. My best friend. My Lord. My Jesus. Is alive. The tomb may be empty, but my heart is full.